since the beginning of humankind. If we wanted to see what the weather was doing, we'd simply step outside, take a look around, maybe put a finger to the wind. Well, they do that and a whole lot more out here, but there is one particular piece of weather phenomenon that has dominated the firefight out here. Crews mopping up inside the Cove fire are keenly aware their situation could change in an instant. A change in wind direction could put them back in the path of the wildfire. If you make a mistake on your interpretation of the weather or how it relates to the fire behavior, there can be some serious consequences to that. There's a reason Operation Section Chief Patrick Titus includes weather in his morning fire line updates. We got it tucked in. It's going to get wind tested, so... We had five days in a row of plume-dominated fire behavior, which is pretty unusual. This is a plume, a pyrocumulus cloud to be exact, and the weather it can create is the daily wild card in the Modoc July complex firefighting strategy. The plume you guys saw was interesting. It was an island inside the, the fire, and it, I came in here and it was at 28,000 feet. And that day, actually, I was picking up small pine cones that were coming out of that plume. Pine cones and other flying cinders trigger spot fires outside the established fire lines. And that's exactly what you see happening here right now. After a wet winter, there's an abundance of dry, dead grass, along with juniper and pine just waiting to combust. It only takes one spark. So how does the pyrocumulus phenomenon form in the first place? So a pyrocumulus forms when you have unstable conditions up high in the atmosphere and a really hot fire. So you have strong updrafts and as it reaches a certain level, there's enough moisture in the atmosphere where it kind of creates a cloud. Meteorologist Jimmy Tager is tasked with closely watching and analyzing the weather, including pyrocumulus generated weather. They can impact a fire even as they collapse and die. So when the, a thunderstorm collapses or pyrocumulus collapses, then you have winds kind of outflowing in all directions. And when you have different topography going on, the winds could be swirling in, in different ways to where it's going to totally change the fire behavior which is why crews like these keep one eye on the sky. And the forecast for today is not optimistic. Still high temperatures, low humidity, and high winds are expected as well. And that, of course, does not bode well for the fire or the firefighters. Firefighting Resources of Southern California, organized for potential emergencies, known as fire scope. California virtually exploded. There was more fire than fighters, and houses continued to burn. With the level of disasters that you know California sees, not just in wildland fire, but in earthquakes and, and others, it was very clear early on that there needed to be a governance process that uh, brought all the fire service agencies uh, and the leadership together in California so that we work towards these common goals. Following deadly wildfires in Southern California in 1970, Congress approved special funding to the U.S. Forest Service in 1971, a black and white photograph of firefighters standing on vehicles looking towards the wildfires. The state, with the support of the state legislature, um, provided funding to uh, Cal OES to start forming uh, FireScope. This funding is used to develop a system for improving fire service coordination in Southern California. Photographs of a firefighter dousing a burning house and a man holding a shovel looking at a wildfire behind a hill. It's an acronym, basically. Uh, it stands for Firefighting Resources of California, Organized for Potential Emergencies. It includes our, our partners at the federal level, the U.S. Forest Service and the National Park Service, BLM, Bureau of Indian Affairs. With the technology we have today and the standardization of fire scope, we are able to take a fire, uh, fire engine and firefighters from Southern California, move them into Northern California. While they're responding, they have up-to-date information on radio frequencies, where the base camp is, where, who's the incident commander, and all of that is truly born out of the incident command system, which is a fire scope product. The California Office of Emergency Services, with its fire apparatus and communications equipment, plays an important role in every major firefighting effort. 
Scenes of a person on a stretcher, firefighters spraying water from a ladder truck, and fires burning. When large events do occur, that uh, people don't have to come together and decide how things are going to be managed and operate because they've, that's part uh, of the job has already been done for them. It starts off with radio frequencies. It could be hose fittings. Yeah. It could be how we're going to respond. It's now getting into digital. How are we going to share information? How are we going to share infrared imagery? How are we going to coordinate our aircraft use? We don't all have enough of everything, so we got to figure out how to use everybody's thing as successfully as possible. California being a very disaster-prone state, um, we have to constantly adjust and tweak our fire scope program. By the 1980s, the fire scope program was receiving national recognition and it was used as the model for the National Incident Management System, NIMS. To know that the um, that system has stood the test of time and the trials of uh, over 50 years now, I suppose, um, is incredible. And then it's actually being used as a national model. California is absolutely the model. I mean, we've had to do it because we've had the emergencies and the large-scale disasters that warrant that. But the national system that's in place now is built on the framework of the original Incident Command System, ICS, that was born out of Firescope and out of those early years. Today, it's it's our national incident management system, and uh, you know, if uh, there's anything uh, that can be flattering, it's when somebody copies what you've done. Okay, guys, one, two, three. Every day, firefighters across the nation use the incident command system. When multiple fire units respond to a house fire, they're using the Firescope incident command system to manage their incident. And as a California firefighter, knowing that, uh, it kind of makes you really proud to, to be part of it. There's a variety of day-to-day -day, um, response types that uh, Firescope has been instrumental in really bringing together the California Fire Service. And Active Shooter in particular was one that started with, uh, hey, we don't do that, right. to today where uh, every firefighter in California basically understands, okay, when I arrive on scene, I'm expected to do X, Y, and Z. When we have fire scope meetings, uh, they are very open in format and we have a lot of uh, room for input. We get input from fire departments as small as one or two fire stations to fire departments that have over 50 fire stations. Uh, we have input from our federal counterparts as well uh, that are giving us information about what the rest of the nation is looking at. And so it's a very collaborative atmosphere and it is key to our coordination. Whether it's, it's managing a, an incident by an incident management team or a fire strike team doing structure protection or, or a swift water rescue team rescuing people out of a flood, all of that is driven by Firescope and it is a phenomenal organization. The Firescope vision is to continue national leadership in the development of all hazard management and multi-agency coordination systems to enhance and encourage full participation by the California Fire Service in the statewide fire and rescue mutual aid system, and to provide a common voice for the California Fire Service relating to these issues. Executive Producer, Brad Alexander, Cal OES. Producers, Brian May, Cal OES, and John Larimore, Cal OES. Editor, John Larimore, Cal OES. Graphics, Adria Wells, Cal OES. Special thanks to Tim Kelly, Los Angeles Fire Department, Mario Rita, San Marino Fire Department, Mark Ghiraducci, Cal OES, Brian Marshall, Cal OES, Tom Porter, Cal Fire, Kim Zagaris, Kim Pimlot, Daniel Horton, Ventura County Fire Department, Eric Scott, Los Angeles Fire Department, Michael Eisen, Santa Barbara County Fire Department, Woody Enos, Santa Barbara County Fire Department, Robert Baird, USFS, Cal Fire, and California Natural Resources Agency. Additional footage, California Natural Resources Agency, California National Guard, CPF Fire Vision, Oakland Task Force 4, 
FEMA, KPIX, ABC News, and the San Bernardino County Fire. For more information, go to firescope.caloes.ca.gov.